Hello, Dave here. This is my wife, Kat. Hello. This is the Cinema. It's the podcast where we walk home from the movies. Um, today, we're going to walk the movie to our home because <laughs> uh, it's on our TV box. <laughs> Apple TV Plus has the new John Carney movie, Flora and Son. And we're going to watch it with one of the movie's stars. Yes, in exciting news. Uh, so it's an Irish movie, Flora and Son, and uh, John Carney's an Irish director. Um, and our eagle-eared long-term listeners may remember that back in 2016 when this podcast first started uh, his his movie Sing Street was actually my number one movie of the year and we talk about it a lot in that kind of end of year episode but anyway my mom Linda frequent podcast guest uh, is like a amateur actor and does loads of acting and she is in this movie. She is Flora. She no. And she, so, and our son. She is an extra in this film, and she shot at least today. So what we're gonna do is I can't. We're, we're out to chat about it now to record, and then we're gonna go home and actually watch it with mom, and then we are all going to actually die if she ends up in the movie we don't know if she's you know usually extras <laughs> yeah, get caught yeah so exciting so, we won't even be paying attention to the plot or anything no we're just going to be looking at the background she's in a, in a scene in a park with Eve Hewlson who's Bono's daughter who you didn't oh you did we both watched Bad Sisters you've seen her in it yes yeah. she's a really good actress which one is she which, which bad sister was she she was the youngest. Was she the really one. bad sister? She was the really young one. Oh yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so yeah, she's yeah. brilliant. Oh, she was good. She was yeah. very good in that. And then it's got Jack Trainer, who uh, oh, is yeah. brilliant. He was also in Sing Street. And Joseph Gordon, Gordon Levitt. Levitt. Yeah, you are unable to say that. Famously, Kathy cannot say that man's <laughs> so, name. And it's another musical. I mean, he made once, which a lot of people don't know. He's a brilliant musical director. Uh, I can't wait to see it. We have avoided a trailer for it, like we do with everything that we know we want to watch, because we just want to watch it fresh. Yeah. But. The most exciting thing is I will just get mom to give us a blow by blow of her. Um, I think this is so awesome. I can't wait to hear she her, was her account. In a scene with Eve Hewson, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I'm excited for this. I, I thought Sing Street was fantastic. It, I think it's the only of his films I've actually seen, but I was. You never really saw t- once? No, I never saw once. No, oh, not once. Brilliant. Um, and Do you know the song Falling Softly? I know the song. I mean, how could, you, how could you not know? Yeah. This? How could you not be alive in the world in 2010 <laughs> or whatever it was? Yeah. No, it was the world. It won an Oscar. That's true. Um, Do you know what? He's an incredible director and I love that he makes, like, he's obviously, like, made this in Ireland as well. And I think that's absolutely brilliant. And um, I'm thrilled. I can't wait to watch it. And I'm so excited that my mom was in it. I'm excited. I like, uh, yeah, I love to, um, I love musical it, well, all his movies seem to be about the power of song, right? The power of music in, yeah. in terms of healing. So I'd imagine, I don't know I the so. plot, but he's Flora and her son will be healed by the power of music. <laughs> uh, anyway, I can't wait. And an American will be in it. So we will now go back to my mother, who's at home minding the kids. Uh, we'll watch the movie and then we'll come back and you'll know immediately by the tone of our voices if mom was visible yes. on screen or, or how not. disappointed or not <laughs> we will be. Quick question, do you think Joseph... What's his name, Cathy? What's what's that guy's name? Again? Joseph Gordon Levitt. Oh, thank okay, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. Not Jordan Levitt. No. Yeah. Uh, do you think he's going to be putting on an Irish accent? Actually, I hope so. That would be awful and it, very entertaining. Nothing more that I love <laughs> than an actor doing a bad Irish oh, accent. Oh, fingers crossed. So I hope and pray. Uh, what accent was your mom doing? We'll, we can ask her this. Okay. I, she didn't have any In dialogue. The yeah, but uh, extras have to, you know. To be having conversations. They, they were shooting the scene, and Mum just kept saying, "Top of the mountain," <laughs> and they had to keep saying, "That's <laughs> not in the film." <laughs> okay. Um, all right. We will see you shortly with Linda uh, to talk about Flora and Son. Bye. Bye. You are a great mother. Am I? Happy birthday. What's that? It's yours. Don't want to play. Since when am I guitarist? <clears throat> I can't go on like this, living in a shoebox with a kid who hates me. I can't wait for the day I don't have to be here. Go on! Go back to your dad! I might learn the guitar myself. That's just too funny. It takes years of practice. Commitment. Are you really going to talk to me about commitment? We're ready to teach you how to shred the knob on guitar. So, you want to learn the guitar? This is a gift you can take to your grave. What's your problem? I didn't know I had a problem. You're teaching guitar online, love. What are you hoping to get out of this? I thought this guitar might make me son think I'm cool. I'll be back in an hour! I don't care. How annoying is he? Very annoying. Okay, hi, we're back. We have seen Flora and Son, and we're now joined by Linda, as promised. Hi, Linda. Hi. 
And as you can tell from her downbeat tone, she's not in this movie. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so, so sorry. I mean, it's so funny. There's a park scene and I walked 20,000 steps around this small park in one day and I'm not even seen. All your hard work oh, my has walking. not paid off. <laughs> <laughs> and I, re- I repeatedly fed a homeless man. And no, there's no evidence. An, an extra <laughs> playing a homeless man. An extra playing a clear. homeless man, yes. But he ended yeah. up in the film, but oh. not you feeding him. I hate him. Yeah. yeah. But I kept him alive for that scene. Yeah. yeah you, you did. Do. Well, look, your your work has, has gone unappreciated. <laughs> 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 And when Dick, Except by us, who are appreciating it. But mom told us that it was a park scene, so every time a park came up in the film, we were all like, "Oh my god, <gasps> you should have the, the, the energy in this room when a bit of grass appeared on screen." We we're like, "This is it. This is my scene." And there was a lot of grass scenes. She spends a lot of time at the park, <laughs> having perfect Wi-Fi. I'm sorry, but can we move Skyping. on? Skyping. Yes, of course. Well, no, are you going to tell us any any juicy insights about the behind the scenes making of this of this park scene that you weren't in? Well, the one thing I'll say, because I kind of said it during the movie, like John Carney, the director, and by the way, that's his wife who plays, are we on Spoiler Street? His wife's in No, no, there's, okay. sorry, I should say, uh, welcome to the cinema. If, you, if it's your first time here, there are no spoilers, yeah, until there are. And until it's not a spoiler yeah. to say who an actor is. Okay. No, that's okay. okay. So the actress who plays Eva Hewson's friend, our best friend in this, is actually the director's wife. And the director was fantastic. He was there and he was so involved. But at one point in this park scene, uh, we had to stay there for one hour while he waited for a particular cloud formation. To wow. Oh, cool. yeah. It That's was amazing. all about the light. And there was another hour. where Oh, so the light was the problem, the light not was that the, the cloud no, was no. in the it shot. It was the light. And then oh, he okay. pulled in these massive big screens. And so at one point, well, there you can see them. They're on the swings. It looks like that's the sky, but they have a giant. It's almost like a tarpaulin. Green, green no, thing. no, it's a tarpaulin, a white tarpaulin that's oh, reflecting okay. artificial light to brighten up this winter Dublin day and make it look like summer. That's clever. So it was really. And these guys who stand there, you know, the ones holding the dollies or whatever, yeah. how they hold it steady. Anyway, so it was fun to be part of Is it. That the key and grip? I know I'm there. Is that what the key grip does? The key does. Is that what the best boy does? I don't know what the That's best a role. boy does, but the key grip is, mm, sorry, now I'm lost, Sporting. but the dolly is, because the guys, they're guys who carry a camera and it's not on wheels. They yeah. they they walk with it and it, it manages the bumps. So they're running ahead of the actresses. We, so we actually scene, have those people in this room right now. What what are you guys called? <laughs> this, this is our studio. People can't see the, the studio. Oh, and tell us, because we're all in agreement that Eve Hewson is beyond better than what we like she completely carries this oh film. my god she's amazing she's a film. superstar we mom should, we should what say, was she like oh on set very normal yeah and it was very hard because obviously i wasn't that close to her but it was very hard to tell like they kept shooting and shooting and reshooting and reshooting and it seemed like some of the time it was she saying no i didn't i just want to do it again mm-hmm. i want to do it again so she definitely was going for perfection She's fantastic. Oh my God, she's great. She's I think fantastic. we all loved this movie, right? Loved it. It's yeah, really good. Brilliant. Yeah. It's a feel good movie. It's really nice. I mean, we're all, no, you're not from Dublin, um, but we all know Dublin. We've all lived in Dublin. I've lived, I was there for yeah. five years. Yeah. yeah. So it, it really has a Dublin feel. It has a yeah, very Irish feel, a real full feel good feel. The one thing I would say in case it doesn't come up again like it's a musical but I didn't the music wasn't spectacular it was nice none of it is memorable there's a couple of songs that are in the in the moment I'm like oh that's a good song um meet in the middle is probably the Beautiful. highlight mm. which um but I agree they're not there's nothing like I can't see any of them like once you it's know on, on the like Oscar once, winning yeah. an Oscar yeah but what I'll say on that is I have or, often or on drive this- drive like you stole it you know so good Drive Like You Solo from Sing Street was brilliant. No, but I have often, and on this very podcast, has happened to me um, with The Greatest Showman and with Frozen 2. I left both those films, came on this podcast, said, nah, music wouldn't stick with me. And to this very day, and I mean today, have been listening to the Frozen 2 soundtrack. So I don't think... I just think you need to hear songs a few times before you can really make that kind of assessment on them. I don't think the first time you ever hear a song, you're necessarily going to remember it. sorry, the first time I heard... 
I'm just Ken. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. exceptional though. I'm still singing yeah. it. That's most like it's the that's song. That's the song of, of the year. It's the song of my life. <laughs> yeah. Um, you just Ken. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I actually think that the song Meet in the Middle and then the last song I'm going to be listening to them and they're going to be growers. No, I got to say we'll talk more about that in spoiler street, but the last song didn't land for me as well as I think it could have. The one, the first, yeah, Meet in the Middle landed very well. This well let's mo- put this it back really the, good. Yeah. yeah, we're so in what's very this specific movie about? things here. We should say that. It's about a mother and a son finding each other through the power of music, much yeah. as we suspected, because that's John Carney's MO. And look, I'm fine with that. He's very much a, an auteur in that sense. He just has a, you know, he, he, he writes relatively down to earth, but very sort of sentimental and upbeat movies. But that also are quite very funny and and not afraid to be crude and rude. So he's kind of like it's like the I don't know. There's a Roddy Doyle sort of vibe. He's turned. I think he's turned but, into one. Like after watching once Sing Street and now this, I reckon he's one of my favorite filmmakers. Oh, like wow. that is such a specific type of film he's making. He's got a real tone, doesn't and he? And they're they're all Dublin like musicals with really interesting characters and I think how this the main character in this film Flora she's I've never really seen a character like her in a film she's incredibly unique and I think the setting is wonderful and I'm kind of astounded at how how cool he is actually as a filmmaker to be making this um and to to put so much heart into his films when everyone's so cynical to watch such a sentimental movie but that isn't corny. That's it's it. It's really it's, tough. It's heart. Yeah, That's it's exactly, really hard. This film has it in spades. Yeah. And she's so wonderful oh like, as a protagonist. Like, I thought she... Um, I thought she was so, like, um, grounded and funny and she seems sincere. She's such a real person. Yes, yeah, so, exactly. She felt like a real person. And the son was great. Drac Rainer's in this. He's good. Joseph Gordon-Levitt is, is kind of good, but he's, you know... I kind of, I kind of felt anyone could have kind of played that that role. And maybe I'm being a bit harsh here. Yeah, he no, did a good probably, job. You're probably but... right. He was a little bit cheesy. Surprisingly nice singer. Yeah, lovely. yeah, he was yeah. nice, yeah. And, and it looked I like mean, it was lovely, him playing the guitar. A lovely, as well. sweet voice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, lovely singer. I mean, I think yeah, no, I think he was good because he was like low key and funny and very respectful. No, I really liked him. Yeah, I mean, I bought, I kind of bought the romantic plot in this. Um, I, yeah, I loved all the family dynamics. The sun is excellent. The music's very good. Yeah, the movie, the movie, the movie just hits all the right notes. Pun. And I accidental. just love all the. I just love the Dublin setting. Like we really are very starved of Irish-made movies, and it's just lovely to see a film set in Ireland. And also, like to have a story about a young mother who like lives in a flat with her son, but they're not like you know. You'll often see the kind of poverty porn of that kind of setting, and it's like. Like, they just kind of have a normal life, albeit they don't have that much money. Yeah. And, like, you often see Dublin shows, like, where it's, like, real hardcore poverty or drugs or it's, like, real opulence. And it's kind of nice to just see, like, fairly normal people with fairly normal incomes on screen. Well, because we did say this, is that uh, in every scene she's drinking wine and smoking cigarettes. So there isn't real cash poverty going on. Yeah. I mean, she's living in kind of working class flats and you're assuming she's from a working class background. But he hasn't gone to that poverty porn. He's mm-hmm. just like, so uh, they could be in L.A. It's really interesting drinking wine and smoking cigarettes. Mm-hmm. And there's no evidence of hardship or a bad economy. It's it's a bit of a fairy tale, but mm-hmm. it's lovely. It's really lovely and very Dublin slant. Yeah. They really missed a trick not showing you feeding that homeless man, though. <laughs> <laughs> so Let's us, face it. Tell us <laughs> what were you tell us what were you doing in the scene? I was walking across the park right Mm -hmm. behind where they were swinging on the swing set and I was stopping by the homeless man Mm -hmm. and I was taking a loaf of bread Mm -hmm. out of my bag and I was kneeling down and I was chatting to him and I was giving him the bread and then when the director would shout cut I'd steal back the bread and start over. (laughs) How many times did you do that roughly? I walked around that park I'd say 30 times and I think this is one thing I do want to say you look at a movie and you say it's fantastic it's brilliant it's subtle her acting is extraordinary but I saw at least, I'm going to say 40 or 50 takes of that scene. Now, I was also like um, 
I, I was a background actor. We don't call them extras anymore. As oh, a background sorry. actor in a, we, we miscredited you I, in the I beginning. Yeah. I'm a background actor, but I was in a little episode of the Young Offenders shot in the English market in Cork, and that's the difference between like soap or drama and a high class movie. Scene was shot three times, mm-hmm. and that was it. Once for blocking it out, once for a rehearsal, and then shoot. So you don't get these nuances and these subtleties when somebody's just gone straight in. Yeah, right. that's yeah. why, like a film, they have so much to work with because they've shot it so many they've times. They've shot it so many times that they're pulling from all the different shoes. I just often wonder at the editing process. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah. they're refining. I guess they're constantly yeah. refining the yeah. performance in that moment, and then they're refining it further in the editing booth. Exactly. And this will have had a really like decent budget. Like decent it's an budget. Apple movie. Decent it's John Carney. He's got a really good track record. Uh, a lot of Apple placement in this yeah. movie. That's for sure. For <laughs> yeah, I was hired like- for three scenes in one day, and we shot one. Wow. I like the I like the moment where this isn't a spoiler, but uh, she goes. Uh, don't you know he fucking I can't do a double accent she said <laughs> she's, uh, he, my son sold his, his bike he can't he, the, the guy's like oh you should put it, get him to go cycling no he sold his bike to buy a second hand laptop show like a brand new MacBook Pro <laughs> M2 it was it was an like, oddly specific line about the son selling the bike yeah. and then later on we're it's like oh setup. yeah it's oh because they needed the son to have an, a Mac and there had to be some justification because while they weren't like dirt poor they certainly didn't have much money and like there's no possible way he bought a Mac like, yeah what, how expensive was his bike that he got <laughs> yeah. second hand Mac because I don't the, think you can sell bikes for that much money the, the, um, <laughs> the, the, the thing I did like though speaking of the technology is that um, this movie really uh, brings to life and I think celebrates the fact that um, anyone can make music now mm-hmm. we're like we're in, we're in a stage with technology and it's the same with video making you know we see the we see a bit of that in this where we've got basically studios in our in our grasp you know mm-hmm. it's been completely democratized there's a lot of skype in this like no, i think Dave, it re- you need two things an Not iphone skype, sorry. and a mac <laughs> yeah but <laughs> it's got you know there's it shows that there's a lot of hard work and there are tools involved but it can be learned these things are accessible yeah. it's literally the movie is about a woman learning to play guitar and discovering music and that all these things are at our fingertips. They mm-hmm. are, as he describes in the movie, you know, they are, you know, it's, it's a, what does he say? It's like, it's something you ha- you can, you can gain, you yeah. attain it. You know, it's yours now. Yeah, the skill is yours. Um, and, I, and I love that. And, and it's something that for the most part, there are barriers. There are some, some barriers to entry, but compared to, you know, in Sing Street's era or any other era, like it yeah. has become way more accessible. Particularly when you get a like a very cheap instrument, you know, um, as opposed to like the double basses of the world or whatever. But I think we all like we had such a laugh. We were all properly laughing. Oh, it's really funny. I definitely cried twice. How many times did you I, cry? I cried once. Mom? I don't think I that cried That wasn't a fun. I know. When I was cr- crying when oh. I wasn't in the movie. But other than that. <laughs> <laughs> so you cried when for 100 percent of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who do we write to to complain yeah. about John Carney cutting you in the background which to be honest sounds a little bit distracting that like we're trying to watch a scene and meanwhile someone's shoving a baguette I'm at actually, a homeless guy I'm actually gonna gonna uh, tweet him and just be like do you know really loved your movie but there, you know that scene in the park could have really used something Some texture. Extra. I noticed there was a homeless man now, normally they, people would pass you know by and feed those homeless but people but you know why you weren't seen and I, I now know why you weren't seen. Is it because I was too good? I would have sex stolen the show? Yeah, you would <laughs> yeah, have stolen the show. It. But also yeah. because uh, we realised, mom pointed it out, but I think we'd have realised it anyway. They're, they're pushing a kid in the swing and then obviously the kid, you know, kids can only be on set so long. They're blatantly pushing an empty swing and they zoom in so much to crop out the fact that there's no kid that I actually think you were probably behind them. I think them. I was on the ground with the homeless man while they were pushing an empty swing. I think you're absolutely yeah, right. Yeah, because they cropped in so closely there was no, like they didn't need any, what are you called? Background actors. Background actors. And I think we could move on. I think your listeners are already over my lack of appearance in this movie. <laughs> I, think I think you're underestimating how exciting this yeah, all is. Also, Even that you were just that close to it. I was, was that close so to those fun. people. It was, I was so fun. I was as close to John Carney as I am to you. Oh, that's great. Yes, and we just fantastic. watched the movie. But also, and our like... listeners often complain that you're not on our podcast. So they'll yeah. be really complaining <laughs> that you're not on this film. No, right. not in the movie. 
but listeners now, mobilize we are going to spoil your sofa which is what we do in the episodes where we are not out walking yes. yeah yeah uh, please everyone get up everyone get up get up get up get a move glass to of the wine spoiler and sofa <laughs> and now here we are resettle okay here we are okay so spoilers now for flora and son so i think i think the end is a really lovely idea. I love the idea of everyone coming together and bringing them all together, that they wrote this song together, that they wrote it between prison and, and in LA and all the characters work together. I mean, it's all very neat, but it feels very on brand for the John Carney thing. So I liked it, but I just didn't think the song was kind of good enough. And but it kind of worked a bit, but, but it I wasn't. Think, isn't that you know? part of the charm, though? Because she's only just picked up a guitar a month ago and her favorite song was You're Beautiful by James Blunt and they slagged that off. And the Sun song was like, I'm the Dublin 07 and I'm going to fuck you. <laughs> like they were yeah. both kind of bad. And then okay. they came together and wrote like a nice song together. And I actually think I think the the fa- the falling slowly song of this is the one meet in the middle with her and um, I mean that that's where I cried. I thought Joseph, it was really yeah. lovely. Whereas at the yeah. end I think the it was just song. like how nice it is that, that they got up on stage and sang that song to each other. And I actually think that was kind of the point of it. It was so funny when uh, Jack Jack Rayner goes into the bass solo and she's like, no. Not a chance. Not. <laughs> Their chemistry so as exes was so good. Yeah, really I'm good. really happy to see, I haven't seen him in a film in a long time and like he's an incredible actor. Like um, when he was in What Richard Did. Oh, that was a powerful that film. That Irish yeah. film about the teenage boys who kind of got in a fight and, and accidentally killed a ki- another teenage boy and he's just stunning in that film. And yeah, you don't see him that often, so I was really pleased to see him back in something. Um, and then I think, and we are on spoilers now, but how they visualize, because she starts her kind of Skype guitar lessons with her American hunky guitar teacher. And I was thinking, there's only so long I can sit and watch someone on a screen, um, even though when we were talking about past lives, we said it worked for us. But it's like, I can't watch a whole film of it. And then I just think it was really good filmmaking how we brought them into the room Brilliant. together. It was very stunning. Like, yeah. it was beautifully done. I think was that clever. was proper filmmaking, it what he did. Seamless. Yeah. Suddenly he was on a screen and the next minute he's in the park with her or mm-hmm. in the room with her. And they had lovely chemistry yeah. on yeah, screen. Yeah, they did actually, yeah. Even like as we're talking, we're watching a still of them on the um, screen. Like, they really did have chemistry. It was lovely. And the movie left it open that there might be a relationship moving forward. It didn't shut that down. Yeah, I like that. It yeah. didn't shut yeah. that down. And I it th- would have been weird for her to go to LA. Like, it would have been so wrong with the movie. I thought the third act was good. Yeah. And also, look at it. I mean, we're looking at it here. One hour, 36 minute that that's that's such a good duration really and it good, used yeah. every minute of that effectively and like didn't d- you know didn't outstay its welcome and i know it was in like it was not in a cinema near us anyway i think it said very limited cinematic not release sure in cork at all yeah i don't, I think, don't so. think so no and it's a shame because i'd love an irish film to get a go in the cinema but i also think of all the filmmakers when i was thinking about him with once sing street and now this i've never actually seen any of them in the cinema and I think they play really well on a small screen, actually. Um, I think it works really well. on. Albeit I'd love to see it in cinema, but I think it works really well on a small it's screen. It's relationship driven. It's not. It doesn't suffer background. for it. it yeah. Suffer, um, and I'm really happy for him that Apple did this. Like, it's brilliant. Like, they don't, you know, Apple don't put money behind that many films. Like, so it's, it's brilliant that they did. Uh, but I hope all of our listeners actually go and watch it. Sorry, no, I cried twice. <laughs> the other bit that really got me I just remembered is when he's is, he's in the counselling session and he says that the greatest day of his life oh, was when he shot a music then. video with his man okay I cried three times yeah come I on that was that so scene. nice oh that was and then it was really sad because you know one of the other boys said well I haven't had a good day I haven't had my favourite and I think day. they yeah. really that that's what I you know this film really showed us that like her son yeah they have difficult she had him when she was really young they don't have much money but like they have a nice life. And I think that's what the song at the end was acknowledging. Like, it's we're okay. Weird. Like, we have a nice life I'm together. I'm not in your world. You're not in my world. Oh, there were some good we're lines. Okay, there were good lines. Yeah, because they were like kind of ships in the night at the beginning of the film. And like, she is really resentful. Like, she she is really resentful about the fact that she kind of had a kid at 17 and has never done anything. And that's, you know, you understand it. Like, and, and so is the hus- her ex-husband is also. They, they both harbor that resentment about having a kid so young. But then... It's like, but it's not the kid's fault you had him that young. 
I thought that the movie was quite I th- it surprisingly didn't shy away from any of the darker stuff there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like she l- explicitly says at one point, I sometimes wish he was dead. Mm. Like yeah. th- there was some real shocking dialogue. In yeah. This, I thought. yeah it's just, sometimes I just want to come home and he's not there. Yeah. 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 Mm. And her friends like you should have got the boat to England. Like her friends basically saying to her, you should have got an abortion 14 years ago. So it's kind of it's, it's, it's this weird thing where, you know, you spoke about. You know what Richard did, and what's the name of that filmmaker again? Who and he makes Adam and Paul, and he's I think brilliant. It was Lenny Abrams. Lenny Abrams, yeah, yeah he's, he's brilliant. brilliant as well. But he's, you know, you spoke about Kathy, that you know what the John Carney brand represents. Um, versus, and and the, there is a touch of Lenny Abrams to it in in that there's or or uh, you know I Daniel Blaker or anything where it's just like he's he, he's lasers in on you know. Um, potential you know potentially dark subject matter like this like a mother who resents a young mother who may resent her child but then it's always uplifting he you know he he finds you know he finds he's a very half glass full sort of filmmaker yeah isn't he? Uh, yeah it's yeah. really nice and um, but without it being too sincere or like saccharine or it's pretty saccharine but i don't mind or, 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 it was very comedic. it balances it really well i mean i haven't anticipated how yeah. comedic and how, what a strong comedic actress she is mm-hmm. and one of my favorite scenes in the world couple when she starts her guitar lessons on zoom and and she's like asking him all about himself oh, and take she's your shirt like, off take that your shirt a... play that song again and take your shirt off like it's hysterical but i love i loved his reaction there because yes. it was really inappropriate yeah. Yeah. and, and, and we were up. saying you know if that was uh, yeah. the gender roles were flipped there it would be but then incredibly there was that line when she's harassment. chatting to him she and she says what's your problem and he says i don't think i have a problem she says you're teaching guitar lessons on zoom i know so <laughs> oh yeah 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 that was funny and then he said all oh, right you're irish like he was sort of calling out the irish banter he was so out of his comfort zone initially doing this with he's an irish a very guy. corny guy he yeah very yeah. corny la guy with his big window behind. anyway i love Can I just it. say that like i i love this film i'm thrilled to watch it but they're like four minutes where they were in that park scene it was like everything else went quiet for me I didn't hear any dialogue in the scene I was just watching Dave was trying to talk I was like Shh. I was like where's mom where's mom and mom was like there's the homeless we were guy there's the homeless guy we're like where's the bread it's such an exciting way to watch a film if you think your mother-in-law you is going to show up at any moment <laughs> Not, and do you know something I'm going to go home and I'm not going home tonight I'm staying here but I, I'm going to watch it again because I was Slow also motion. I was also watch, walking at some points around the periphery of the park oh my house. god put it back on <laughs> so, so you might see but what's really interesting because I last year I just did a couple of background stuff and a couple of things and everybody you see on screen is paid and is repeating it everybody even the people in the windows across the road mm-hmm. blows my mind there's nobody accidental there that's so I mad might, yeah it is mad I guess they have to be because you have to sign your permission away well, to they be have things, to and you have to keep you? repeating the same thing yeah, for yeah. continuity oh yeah, yeah. oh god yeah. Yeah, of well you're lucky the actress is striking in America at the moment because you'd be replaced by AI <laughs> 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 you wouldn't have gotten your day out on the film set it would just be your image <laughs> looped around yeah. they would just take it off my IMD profile or whatever and just keep replicating it <laughs> sorry I don't have, have an IMDB you, profile they would have shot you once handing a slice of baguette to someone and they'd have just looped it yeah so no Luckily you be you just drag and drop the baguette lady from uh, <laughs> from the, the background extras dot com. Wait, there she is. Mom, we need baguette lady. Are you crossing the picket line by talking on this podcast <gasps> about a movie you were in? Oh, scab. <laughs> <laughs> what I will say, and this is real scandal, because at, at the very end of it, the guy in charge of props came up to me and took back the bag of baguettes <laughs> oh no <laughs> were they real baguettes every penny can every, they were, were they fake baguettes or real baguettes they were real baguettes so he took them were back were you hoping to take some baguettes home with you and you were like I'm getting from the train baguettes back from the movie Florence son. <laughs> <laughs> that man handled baguettes and took them back admit it you took one bite before I you gave it back not. I did not oh. Uh, anyway, thank you so much. I can't believe you end. crossed the picket line to be a scab know, for our I podcast. You guys, yeah. are, you guys are worth it. It was worth yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was so fun. Uh, thanks, Linda. Okay, thanks. so sorry. And um, thanks everyone for listening. You know, come and leave us five stars where you live every you listen to podcasts. Come over to Patreon. But we have to turn the podcast recorder off right now and just go back to that scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just gonna loop that. <laughs> thanks, mom. All right. Bye. Bye. It was fun. Thanks, guys. Leave your heart. Maybe we should meet in the middle Maybe we
Go love yourself. She went, You're 26. <laughs> I was like, Size 26. Yeah. And she was like, Oh, right, right. That makes sense. This is the show where we're learning to love ourselves a little more and taking you along with us. I grew up never seeing anybody that looked like me. And that made me feel like not part of society, like almost like not a woman because I just never felt like I fit in. If you've got a relative that is mean about your body, Laura, what do we say to them? 